Genesis chapter 19 by a show of hands raise your hand if you are not if you are not familiar with the story of Sodom and Gomorrah if you're not if you're not familiar with Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot's life so I see two two hands okay good they're good that's all I needed to know so you have you got Genesis 19 and we're going to add to the witness out of Luke the 17th chapter okay Genesis 19 and then we're going to jump over to Luke 17. Okay? When you guys have that, say amen. Everybody's good? Anybody still looking? Everybody's in good shape? Okay. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to turn our attention to the text. I'm going to allow you guys to remain seated because we have a lot of ground to cover. And in the interest of having you stand for that entire time, we're going to have you sit, okay? Everybody good with that? Now to him who in days and times past has blessed us with all things pertaining to to godliness and righteousness we once again turn our focus to the holy mount of God and God we look to you because we have no other one to whom we could look you alone have the words of eternal life. Amen. Where else can we go? So we come without form, we come without fashion, without protocol, and without etiquette. We come simply because we need a word from God. satisfy the longing in our heart answer the very question that we cannot seem to figure out do for us and unto us only what God can do In these precious and fleeting moments that we have, Holy Spirit, superintend over the conversation that we have now. And I cause your will to be made known and to be accomplished in our heart and in our life. We ask this believing in the simple name of Jesus Christ to that we say amen. amen since there are some who are not familiar with the story we are going to start in verse 1 okay and I just want you to follow along in uh, the, the, the translation that you might have okay and we're just we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some work this morning okay now two angels came to Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom and when he saw them, he arose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. 
And he said, Hear now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly, and so they turned into him and entered his house. And then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now, before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them through the doorway and he shut the door behind him. And he said, Brethren, do not do so wickedly. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to, the, to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, this is the men of Sodom speaking, said, stand back. This one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge now we will deal worse with you than we will with them I'm reading this for your benefit so they pressed hard against the man lot and came near to breaking down the door but the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. You guys with me? And then, they, then they said, this is the men in the house, who by the way are angels, but let me just work it. Then the, then the men said to Lot, have you anyone else here, son-in-laws, sons, daughters, whomever you have in the city, take them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Tonight's the night. And so Lot went out. He spoke to his son-in-laws who had married his daughters and said, get up and get out of this place for the Lord will destroy this city. But his son-in-laws, but to his son-in-laws, he seemed to be joking. They thought he was joking. They thought he was playing around. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. Amen. If you got your own Bible, underline that. Right? And while he lingered, the men, who were angels, took hold of his hand and his wife's hands and the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord, being merciful to him, they brought him out and set him outside the city. You following the story? Amen. Look at me. The angels had to forcibly yes. remove Lot. Yes. You read it in your Bible. He lingered. And you, have you ever had something you're supposed to do, but you don't do it, and you just kind of, right. you know, you just, you just, you know what you should be doing, but you don't want to do it, so you just, 
You mentioned Dr. Taylor, Aunt Carrie. Aunt Carrie would say this, oh, I'm just kibitzing around. Mm. If you knew Dr. Taylor, she'd love to say that. You call her, well, oh, I'm just kibitzing around. I mean, she's she not doing anything. She's just fooling around. Wait, she's not. A lot, lot was fooling around. A lot didn't get the imminent danger that was at his door. Yeah. To Lot, here's the whole sermon, to Lot, it seemed like it was just another day. Yes. To his son-in-laws as well. Not, not, these were men sent from God. They were angels, and if you were here for the angel series, they were spirit beings that now God had given a physical form to so that they could what? Come into the earth. Right? Now, they didn't have to come into the earth to carry out God's command. What did they come into the earth for? For one purpose. To save Lot. If you know your Bible, you got the sermon already. Because their coming in to save Lot is indicative of Christ coming in to save who? Out of the city. This is your Bible working. All right? No, there's no preaching this morning. You're going to read it and you just, you got to tie your Bible together and say, oh, I see God's story. Here it is. Here it is. So he lingered. They put him out of the city. 17. So it came to pass when they had brought him outside that he said, now the angels talked to him, they're outside the city. Listen to what these angels say. Escape for your life. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Here it is. Escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. You follow it? This is imminent danger. This goes beyond imminent danger as you and I would know it. This is what we call divine judgment. This is greater than imminent danger. This, this is God removing his hand. He's removing that. And th 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 this is not Satan destroying anybody. This is God destroying. You follow that? This is beyond imminent day. This is divine judgment and wrath. You're looking at it. Here it is. Then Lot said to them, Lord, help Lot. Please. Please, my lords, indeed now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me, by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some, let some evil overtake me, and I die. See now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there, for is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? The angel said, now, are you guys, are you guys thinking? You got to think. The worst thing to do in Sunday is come to church and don't think. Right? You've got to think, because when you think, the Holy Spirit can help you put your Bible together. The angel tells him to do what? Escape, but where did he tell him to escape to? To the mountain. And all of your Bible, the mountain is always the place where what? Where God rules. Up where? On the mountain. Mount Zion. He's telling him not only to get out, he's telling him to what? Go up. Indicative of where he was, which was Sodom, which was in the valley. Doomed to destruction. It's not enough to get out if you don't go up there. <laughs> this is your Bible. Any preacher can take this and preach it. You don't even have to have a license to preach. It's preaching itself. You've got to get out and you got to go up. Because, watch this, this is your sermon, getting out. I'm telling you, whoever wants to preach it, just come up here and take over. Because you got, it's in your Bible. I'm not doing anything. Here it is. And so he said to him, now the angel, now Lot, Lot said, look, I can't make it. Lot is saying, 
I don't have the strength to get out. And I certainly don't have the energy to go up. Not only that, I got to carry my wife and my daughter. If I can't make it, what, what chance do I have making it with them? says to him, I have favored you concerning this thing. We're not going to do it in the context of the time we have today. You got you to read chapter 18 and you really got to go back to 12 and 13 to understand that God is saving Lot because of Abraham. There is nothing about Lot. You follow what I'm saying? This is, this is God's favor. To, the text says here, the angels favored him. The angels favored him because God has favored Abraham. You read it. Chapter 18. He, God, Abraham goes on the record. If there are just... Ten. He couldn't even get the ten, so now destruction is imminent. But in spite of destruction, God remembers Abraham. Yes. I'm going to get your family out for your sake. Are you, with, are you guys reading this? Amen. Here it is. Hey, I favored you concerning this thing also. I will not overthrow this city. For which you have spoken. Here, 22. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you get there. God has sent me with divine wrath. And the moment I lift my hand against Sodom, fire and brimstone will rain down from heaven. But he tells Lot, I cannot raise my hand until you get to the city, until you escape to Zor. Now, I wanted you to go to the mountain, but you have gone back and forth, and it seems like I won't get you to move at all, so I'm going to let you go to Zor. But you got to hurry up and get there, because the moment I raise my hand, are you following the story? And therefore the name of the city is Zor. 23. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. The only thing I'm going to say about this, this helps us to understand this is not some type of cataclysmic event occurring in the earth. This is not a volcano greatly erupting. This is not an earthquake coming up. Natural occurrences that occur in the earth with some type of heightened uh, uh, sensitive. No, the text is clear. God did this. This came down from heaven. Do you follow up? I told you, divine judgment. You guys with me? Here it is. Son of then the Lord rained fire and burnt fire. So he overthrew the cities. Get this. Are you guys looking at it? Now, you, now, now you're going to understand why the angels pleaded with Lot like they did. Read this. 25. So he overthrew the cities. All of the plain. All of the inhabitants. And what grew on the ground. He burned the cities, every building, every structure. He burned the people. You follow me? He burned the livestock. Right? And he scorched the ground. So that it could never, ever reproduce. It's done. It's a wrap. 
This is divine judgment. Yes. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Even after the flood, once the waters receded, at least things started what? Yes. Started growing again. Are, are you guys with me? Here it is. Here, are, this is it. This is your sermon. This is your sermon. But his wife looked back behind him. And she became a pillar of salt. Right? That's your sermon, right? The sermon title is what? Remember Lot's wife. Good God help. Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw and behold the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain here it is that God remembered Abraham right and this is what I told you and all that God did he remembered Abraham and he did what and he sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt turn to Luke 17 verse 20 are you there now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. You guys with me on that? Jesus came preaching that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's another way to say it. It's here now. The kingdom of God. The reign of God. The rule of God. Get this, which is the opposite of what you had in what? Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Christ now comes, right? Comes in the volume of the book and he comes and his, his consistent message is that the kingdom of God is at hand. The reign, the rule of God is here right now. So they asked this question of him. They asked the question and said, when would the kingdom of God come? Right? He said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is in you. Right? Amen. This is the word of God. Yes. The reign, the rule of God, the kingdom of God is happening now on the inside of every believer. And it happens as every believer submits to the authority, to the reign, and to the rule of God. They then experience the kingdom of God inside of them. Amen. Listen, everybody want to know what heaven is like. This, he's this is what heaven is like. Is where everything in heaven is submitted to the authority reign and rule of God just instead of a physical presence it happens in a spiritual one yes. that's all it is that's why Jesus can say no it's here now Amen. it's here now because I'm here now and I'm here simply because I have submitted myself to the authority to the reign and to the rule of God Simply because my father said, who will go for us? That's, your, that's, that's Isaiah, right? That's your old text. He said, who will go for us? Right? Jesus comes down here. Not on his own will. Not because he didn't have anything else to do that, 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 that period in history. He came down because his father needed a sacrifice to consummate his plan of salvation and redemption. So Christ, can, so I'm off the track. Here it is. So then he said to his disciples, 22. 
The days will come when you will desire to see one of the one of the days of the Son of Man. You will not see it. And they will say to you, look here, look there. But whatever you do, do not go after them or follow them. Right? Everybody today knows exactly where Jesus is. It's wherever they see you. Jesus is here. Jesus is there. He said, no. 24. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines unto the other part of heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Look at me. To me submitted to the authority and the reign and rule of God means not only do you become obedient to the Father, you also become a victim in your flesh. Why? The book says, as Christ has suffered in the flesh. Always remember that we serve a suffering Savior. The emblem of the Christian church is not a human monarch. But it is a rejected, a beaten, abused turned out by traitors, savior, killed naked. That's the sign of the Christian church. That right there. Not gold, not emblems, not a crown. This, the cross. And he said, if you would follow me, he tells, his, he tells, he tells the church, you must also take up your If I was going another way with this, I would tell you this. Trade in your crown for a cross. Too many believers want a crown for salvation. That's why they come to the church. They want to be crowned. They want to be anointed king. They want the blessings of the aristocracy to befall on them. Trade in your crown. Why? Why? Don't, don't get mad at me. Why? Because that's what he did. Did he not? Did he not lay aside all that was his by right? The book said he what? He humbled himself. Even unto death. That means all of his life, from the moment he left heaven, all he did was one thing. He kept going down. Every year of his life, he went further down. Just kept, he, he went down to the point where he could get no lower than what he was. Right? This is the kingdom of God. This is, you're looking at the reign, rule, and authority of God. Here it is. But first you must suffer many things and be rejected. And as it was in the day of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and closed the door. Are you guys with me on this? Get, get what he's saying. In the days of Noah, divine judgment came, right? right? Destroyed. He didn't destroy a city. He destroyed the whole earth. Yeah. All right? And up until the moment that God spoke. Until he said, Noah, get in the house. If you ever read that story, you'll understand Noah never closed the door. God did. God closed the door to the ark. And when he closed the door, it was a sign that what? There's no more. If you're not in now, you're not getting in now. Why? You had to. Noah preached for years. He preached once. They came to Noah with one question. What are you building? He said an ark. Why are you building it? 
because destruction is imminent. What do you mean, Noah? It is about to rain. And once it start, it will not stop. He said, oh, I got one simple message. Get in the ark. If there's anyone you love, anyone you care about, anyone you got a hope, just get them in the ark. It's the only place of safety. Once God removes his hand. Are you with me? He said, that's how it was in Noah's day. Now, look what he says here. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, drank, they bought and sold, they did business, commerce, they planted and they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, he wasn't even in Zor long enough I mean, he, I mean, he barely crossed over the threshold of Zor before the angel of the Lord lifted his hand. That's a sign telling God all is ready. And anytime you offer a sacrifice, God always honors by what? Sending down what? Fire. And when Lot, Lot in fact, I mean, the, look, tie your Bible. The Bible says if the righteous just barely escape. I mean, one step back, their whole garment would have caught on fire and they would have been consumed. Right? Here it is. L listen to this. We got the saying, it's business as usual. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that? Anybody ever heard that phrase? Yeah. Business. Listen to me. If you don't get anything out of this message, this is the whole point of remembering Lot's wife. Listen to what I'm telling you. It is not business as usual if you continue to live as if it, as if it is business as usual if you continue to come into the house of God as if it is just another ordinary Sunday are you guys following what I'm saying this, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, look, this is in your Torah. Remember what happened to Noah. Remember what happened to Lot. Remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me tell you why. Here it is. Even so it will be in the day that the Son of Man is revealed. Meaning what? When he came the first time. He came as a humble servant. Said, here am I, Lord, to do thy will. It is written of me. Right? He, 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 read, he read out of the book of Isaiah and said, what? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, I've come for a purpose. I'm not just living to be living. It is not business as usual. And how do I know it? The spirit of the Lord is on me. I've got to move with a quickening that is not in my body, but in my spirit. I've got to preach now. Even when I don't want to preach. I've got to pray now. Even when I don't want to pray. Why? It's not business as usual. All over the world, it's business as usual. Look what the text says. Here it is. In that day, he who was on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. Anybody know why I was late this morning to church? I was late this morning, the reason I'm late every Sunday morning. When I'm ready to go, that's when my boys remember, oh, I left something in the house. <laughs> now for 20 minutes, they were downstairs not doing anything. And I say the same thing I say every Sunday morning, whatever you want to take to the church, get it now. 
Why? Because when I'm ready to go, what? We're leaving. We're out of here. Right? But they always wait until I get in the car. Not on my way to the car, but I'm in the car. Then they say, wait a second, Dad. I left something in the house. Now juxtapose that to what Christ is saying. He's saying that when the Lord comes, that same scenario will play out all over the known world. People will both see and hear the day of the Lord approaching. And there will be some that will say, wait, I got to go back in the house. But by then it's what? It's too late. Too late. They're living, my sons are living under a, a, a season of what? Grace. I'm tying your Bible together. I'm using my boys, but it's your Bible. There's grace. Why? Because like a lot, I always favor them. And I allow them to what? To go back. Go back and get the things you're comfortable playing with. Go back and get the things you feel you are unable to do without. That's what he says. And that's what they do. But on the day of the Lord, right? He said, that will not happen. He said, now you live under grace. Now you live under mercy. My hand is restrained for a set time. So now we operate like it's business as usual. It's okay if I forget it, I can just go back in the house. But a day is coming, a time is coming when the Son of Man shall appear and there will be no more going back to the house. There will be no more business as usual. Are you guys with me? Here it is, verse 32. Here it is, here it is. 31, and that day he was on the housetop. Goods on the house. Let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, one who is in the field, let him not go back. You know what that field represents? Work. If you're at work when the Lord comes, you will not have an opportunity to go home and get your family. Lot did. They saved Lot and his family from divine judgment. But when Christ comes again, listen to me, you don't get anything out of the sermon, get this. When the day of the Lord appears the second time, listen, it's every man, woman, and child for himself. You either have been submitted under the authority, reign, and rule of God, or you're not. Those of us who are under his reign, his authority and rule, and who have longed for his appearance, we will count the presence of Christ more glorious than any family, than any friend, nor any possession. I won't even think about it. I won't even be tempted to go back. Why? Because the glory of living with God in peace and not wrath will be for more for to me a greater joy than anything this world has ever given to me. 
And the only way you can experience that greater joy is to live under the authority, reign and rule of God now. So that like Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand. I'm living in heaven right now. My body's here. The, the book says what? Our outward man day by day is perishing, but my inner man is growing stronger. Why? Because I'm getting closer to God. I'm getting closer to where I really want to live. And it ain't here. It ain't in West Philly. It ain't in Phoenixville. It ain't in Jersey. Let me help you because I'm a good pastor. Listen. Don't you buy a house you can't live. Don't you get a car so fancy you can't leave the engine running when God calls. You follow what I'm saying? You got to why I got all these young adults and you're just starting out like you're just starting to make some good money. You're just starting to be, listen. Don't have your life consumed by worldly possessions. Why? Here it is. Read what it says, verse 32. And let me remind you, this is Jesus speaking. So don't get mad at me. Are you there in verse 32? Here it is. Come on, if you're there, read it out loud. Read what it says. Look. Look at the title to the sermon. If you don't do nothing else, remember Lot's wife. If you don't do nothing else, if you don't remember Christ, you don't remember the cross, you can't. Re you don't remember Noah. You don't know how many animals went in. You, if you don't remember any of that, remember Lot's wife. This is Jesus preaching. This is not me. I'm just. I'm just repeating what he said. I'm what you call a poor preacher. A poor preacher preaches another man's sermon. I'm a poor preacher in my sermon. This is Jesus' sermon. Jesus said all this is the conclusion to his whole sermon. He said, just remember, Lot's wife. Are you guys with me? He said, here it is. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. Help me, Pastor. To lose something means you lose possession of it. That means whatever it was, it is now no longer in my possession. I've lost it. Meaning I've lost what? Control over it. If you ask me for a card right now, I can't give you because I've lost it. I don't have control over it. It's not in my possession. Now, if you can understand that, Jesus is saying that's how we as believers ought to live. Meaning what? We're the card. And we lose or give up our life our authority, our rule, our reign over this physical frame. We lose it. We give up control of it, authority of it. To give a God who we cannot see, cannot hear, complete control over our life. And we lose ourself to Christ. And now whatever Christ says rules in our heart. So I no longer have the authority to do what I want to do over my own body. I'm no longer my own God. But rather now I serve God and now I live under his authority under his reign under his rule do you follow what I'm saying 
and because I can't see him or hear him therefore I must live by faith the great thing about controlling my own self is I can always talk to myself raise your hand if you talk to yourself if you're not raising your hand get out of this church because you you getting a free ticket I mean you going down just get out whatever's getting ready to hit you I do not want to fall on me we always talk to ourselves why because we believe we control our selves Whereas those that have been born again and washed under the blood, we realize that we are no longer our own. Amen. We've been bought with a price. Amen. That what? We, we, we no longer seek to save our life. But rather we give our life. Are you guys with me? All Jesus said was remember Lot's wife. What was it about Lot's wife? Lot's wife had been shown mercy. None of the other women got out of Sodom. Read the record. Only three women got out of Sodom. Lot's wife and his two daughters. Every last, every single woman outside of that God burned with, with divine fire. But not Lot's wife. Lot's wife had been saved. Turn your listening ears on. This is it. I'm over. I'm, I'm, out, I'm over time anyway, so I'm just going to quit. Here it is. Lot's wife had been saved. Lot's wife had been given a place of safety up on the mountain not only was she saved from destruction God had reserved a place on the mountain Old Testament mountain where God lives Jesus said this tie your Bible together he said I've got to go away to prepare a place for you why where where up in my father's you got to do better than this I'm not even preaching just tie your Bible together God and Jesus are the same person and they're saying the same thing Jesus said in the house the angels told Lot's wife it's up on the mountain all you got to do is run and when you run how do you run he told them how to run you remember the story he said escape for your life. Look at your neighbor, say no cute running. No, 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 no. That's how you're running when they're filming you to live stream on Facebook. You run cute. No, 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 no. He said, listen here. You gotta get to the mountain. And you've gotta run like your life depends on it why because it does if you don't get out and get up what I am about to unleash on Sodom will kill you in the plane notice what the sex said it not only destroyed Sodom and the Gomorrah it destroyed everything in the whole place the entire valley Sodom Gomorrah and all of the neighboring cities except Zor because that's where they decided to go and God yet again was merciful she had salvation she was offered a place of safety here it is if God saves me he gives me a place of salvation what else must he also do he's going to also provide for me why can't provide for myself why because everything I have is what 
Jesus just said, if it's in the house, what? Leave it. Don't go back. Don't turn back. Why? 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 Because if you get to the mountain where God lives, then you can come under the provision that comes out of God's hand. Not in the valley, but up on the mountain. He saved her. Gave her a place of safety up on the mountain. And if they could have just demonstrated the faith, they would have seen the hand of God. They had just seen the arm of God in destruction. But if they could have gotten to the mountain, there they would have seen the hand of God. And they would have known God in a greater and deeper way than they ever could have back in Sodom. My message to the church, simply this. Remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife, the Bible said she turned around. And her turning around is indicative that her heart went back. Her body never did, God in case there was, her body never, but just the fact that she turned, she was on her way. Angels had her by the hand. Angels got her outside the city. Said all you got to do now is run to the mess. All you got to do. Just outside of the city, she turned around. She looked back because she wanted to go back. She was unable to leave what God had delivered her from. Lot's wife was outside the city. She had, she was she was she was saved. She didn't make it to the mountain yet, but at least she was saved from destruction. But something in the heart of Lot's wife. Her turning around is indicative that her heart if God didn't put her in salt, guess where she would have been? She'd have ran. She would have ran back to Sodom with the fire coming down. She would have ran head first back into a city that was currently under destruction by God himself. This is what I want you to get out of this. If you can get this, you've got it. This is an example of how strong the temptations of the flesh can be. You can know it's bad for you. Wait a minute, it's not only that it's wrong for you and bad, You've already done it before and have already suffered the consequences of it already. It wasn't like you got pulled into it ignorantly. You already know how it's going to end. You already know how it's going to turn out. But yet the call of the flesh. That's why John summed it up. He said, all that is in the world. You name it, it doesn't matter. He said, all that is in the world. It's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, pride of life. You know what the pride of life is? Stand up so I can quit. Stand up, stand up. You know what the pride of life is? Here's the pride of life. The pride of life says I can do it again. And I won't get caught. That's the pride of life. That, that, that's what it is. 
It's the lust of the flesh. You already went out. You know, it's the lust of the eye. You know you shouldn't have it, but you want it anyway. And the pride of life says, you know what? I can have it anyway. Somehow we convince ourselves that if we go back into Sodom the second time, God will still be merciful unto me. And I can reject God's offer of living in his presence on the mountain. And I somehow can live in the depravity of sin which is an affront to God and still believe somehow I'm going to get out unscorched unharmed listen 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 everybody won't be under you will be under you This is what Paul says to the Philippian church. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He's the opposite of the problem. Paul's coming and saying, look, I, I'm going to tell you up front, I don't know everything. Right? Come on. Watch this. Woe be unto all you know-it-alls. <laughs> and I'm serious. Yeah. And I'm serious. Yeah. One of the worst things that can happen to us is for someone to ask us a question. It's the worst thing that can ever happen to anybody. Because if I ask you a question, I immediately prop up your ego and I esteem you as being smarter than me. And here's the worst thing. You believe it. And I can prove it. I can prove it. Because before they, be fit, before they can finish asking the question, what do you say? Well, if I was you. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you're already, you're not me. Right? How can you know, even if I tell you what I'm going through, I haven't told you the whole thing. Amen. I haven't told you the gory details. I'm just sharing the part that I think you can handle. That's right. Why go to them when they don't know? They can't help. And most times, and I hate to say this, most times they really want you to fail anyway. They really don't want you. If I somehow could flash an infrared light on right here and it could identify all of the Judas spirits in the church. He said the one that killed me was the one that ate bread out of my own hand. Why not? Go to God. Why not go up to the mountain? He's already provided for your salvation. He's already secured a place of safety. And if you could just get to where God is. And God made it so that he, look, God even comes down so that what? He's reachable. He's not far off. He is nigh unto your own mouth. All you got to do is call him. But the temptations of this world, the amount of pressure they exert is behind human comprehension. Drawing us back to the way we were, to the way we used to live. Paul says, I count myself not to have apprehended. He said, there's only one thing I claim, and that is this. 
I'm going to forget everything that is behind me. And I'm going to reach. You got to study that. You got to study that. To reach means to stretch. That means to almost step off the legs. To get, I, whatever it takes. I'm going to reach forward. Forgetting what's behind me. Reaching for with the things that God has in front of me. Paul said, I'm going to live my life this way. I'm going to press towards the mark. Tie your Bible together. It's not just a calling. It's a what? It's a calling that comes down from where? From the mountain of God. He's calling you up. He's already brought you out. Now the next step is he's got to call you up to the high calling. That is in Christ Jesus. Who now lives inside of you. And ushers in the authority, reign, and rule of God. Every woman, every man, boy and girl, remember Lot's wife. Lord Jesus, I've done the best I could to instruct your people. And I pray now that the word of God that has gone forth would find good ground. Not thorny, not rocky, overcome by weeds and tears, but fertile soil. And cause this Bible story concerning this nameless woman help us every day of our lives to remember Lot's wife. Help us to receive with gladness the salvation brought for us by the precious blood of your beloved son. Amen. Amen. Help us to lay a hold to the safety provided by the word of God. Yes. And help us to rest and have peace in the provisions offered by the hand of God. Even though we don't see, we don't know, nor do we understand. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name for the sake of his kingdom, for his glory, and for his reign. And all of God's people said amen. 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 Amen, amen again. Amen. You may be seated all over the church.